Bandits can get dangerous fast. Well, boy, oh boy, do I have a show for you. Ladies and gentlemen, we managed to survive an entire year hiatus of not having a single episode of Amphibia. And now here we are. Admittedly, my original plan was to begin with the Owl House since for some reason it took less time to appear on demand as opposed to Amphibia. But then after watching the premiere, I just couldn't help myself. I mean, I can guarantee right now that this season of Amphibia is gonna be a massive game changer. Matt Browley and the team promised us with lore and adventure and I already got goosebumps. With a little of my frog input, I know Amphibia is gonna be a great show. I'm regularly a person that prefers full half hour episodes instead of 15 minutes of fame, but for for this show, they surprisingly pulled it off pretty dang well. Also, and speaking of shows with 15 minute episodes, Big City Greens is a friggin' hilarious show. I just had to mention it after watching the episodes before the premiere. Anyways, there's a ton of things to discuss about, my dear amphibians. Don't know if you guys are okay with that name, but I'm sure that you've all waited long enough. Roll that intro. <laughs> Straight from the beginning, we're hinted with how long it's been since Anne has been in the land of Amphibia, with the same frog from literally the first episode of the show beginning, shouting that he's been in the air for three months. The only difference is that the dragonfly within this episode has a different shade of color, but you still get the idea. Plus, this not only means that Anne and her friends have been in the world for three months, but it also means that this is possibly about how long it takes before the Deadly Valley reemerges once more. And this may be an important key to know while on their journey into Notopia and other parts of the land outside of Wartwood's city limits. Sprig also acknowledges how it was time for spring, meaning that it was probably around fall or winter when Anne arrived in their dimension. But I suppose the real question is if whether or not Earth and Amphibia have the same exact weather patterns at the same time. Another part of their conversation was about how Anne is most likely still traumatized by how she had to fight off one of her close friends, Sasha. Someone who for sure has been confirmed to be a threat against Anne when watching the newly included clip within the Amphibia Season 2 introduction. When I first saw this sequence, it was mind-blowing to say the least. The clip looked as if it was something out of a movie. Also, we were shown once again the Red Moon, and there must be some sort of hidden key element or significance behind it all. But I guess for right now, all I can really say is that it most likely signifies Sasha's bloodthirsty greed for power and dominance. And just take a look at the new armory and sword that she possesses now. Surely this must mean that Sasha has had some sort of upgrade in authority with Grime or something similar. The other element to mention from this clip for sure is Marcy enveloping the background holding the Calamity Box, something that to this day has been buried without Anne's awareness. Wouldn't it be a good idea to bring the music box with us on the trip? Oh, uh... No, 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 no. Uh, uh, it'll be safe with my contacts for the time being. All right, HP. I trust your judgment. Marcy within both the teaser trailer for this season and the posters make it out to seem as if she's had quite a bit of experience combat wise and possibly even knowledge wise while stuck in Amphibia. And unlike Sasha, I feel as if Marcy won't possess a vindictive personality but instead maybe be a great help to Anne and the gang. But back to her holding the Calamity Box, it seems as if Marcy could have been transported into the center of Amphibia also known as Newtopia. Amphibians who by Hop Pop's understanding are known for their wisdom and intellect, which would back up the theory about Marcy knowing something about the music box even further. We could even tell that she seems to be smiling while holding it, as if she's been searching for it for a purpose and now her search is over. Now as for this episode as a whole, it was about Anne stressing out over protecting the house while they adventure their way out of town. And even though Hop Pop had already hired a guy by the name of Chuck, Anne assumes that he's not adequate enough to protect the farm while they're away, which she ended up being wrong about due to him having the ability to fix the entire property in less than a minute. Oh, and he grows tulips. Yes, 
he does. Surprisingly though, Anne is nearly successful with her foolproof plan until she uses some mysterious chemical that Loggle had. The chemical causes the crops to come to life and soon do the exact opposite of what Anne wanted to happen. This not only upsets her, but awakens a fury similar to how she was in the previous season's finale. This just shows how incredibly protective Anne is when it comes to the planters and their livelihood. But that's not all to take away from the scene. Not only does she go full ninja right here like in the intro, but this also shows a blue glow in her eyes. Quite similar to the same glow shown on her sword in the poster and once again the introduction. And just knowing this is imperative. Because could this mean that Anne possesses powers of any kind? And when protecting Sprague from the giant mantis from the first episode, she seemed to have blue eyes for a few moments as well. I had mentioned it within my analysis predicting that her natural eye color was either blue or this was a mere animation error. And I guess the possibilities are still endless. One last example with Anne using blue glowing weaponry is a sneak peek clip of her hunting with a bow and arrow. Once again, this may be a power that she later this season unlocks, since the blue glow clearly brightens up as if it's being activated. I mean, heck, it could also mean that the Calamity Box's blue gem resembled Anne instead, but not Marcy. And that's something I'll get into once Marcy is officially introduced, I guess. But that just about cuts it for the first part of the premiere. The second part is titled Fort in the Road, where the gang finally make their way down to Newtopia, only to be annoyed by Hot Pop's numerous road rules. And before we dwell any further within the episode, I gotta mention how within the show they say stuff like Oh My Frog as opposed to Oh My God. Plus notice how the sign when leaving outside of the valley, it says May Frog Help You. And I am purposely pointing this out to conclude that perhaps the land of Amphibia has a literal god named Frog or, well, is actually a person that is a frog or something similar to that. Thus solving the mystery behind who looks to be the frog embodied version of Zeus basically, shown within the season 2 poster art. There, I had to get that off my chest. Alright, now let's actually talk about this episode because it escalated. Quickly. After time and time again of getting bored from Hot Pops' infuriating rules, both Sprig and Anne managed to make their way out of the carriage and into a secret ancient bunker. Eh? Eh? Come on, I definitely wasn't the only person thinking about that. Besides that, Hapadaya also informs everyone that the ruins had been there even before any written history. And that's something to truly think about because wouldn't that indicate that the history is either lost or maybe even something more cryptic? Like perhaps the land of Amphibia being an experiment or a long lost discovery of some sort. For all we know, is there a reason behind the amphibians of this world having the capabilities of speech and human-like body movements? Look. Your world might have stuff like flying machines and magic memory boxes, but we don't have weird stuff like that here. This is just a normal town. You're talking frogs! This could be another story about Earth being the true home world of the main characters while them only being just mere samples of the world they live in now. But that's just a guess. Moving right along, once inside of one of the bunkers, they come across a futuristic panel that looks like something out of an alien spaceship. And when inspecting the insides of it a bit, they discover that it's a factory building some things. But before we can truly learn much of anything within the ruins, Hot Pop mistakenly gets in the way and has to be saved after being cuffed down. And in order for the computer to fully shut down the moving parts, they are told by the machine to insert a disc. Something that I found very intriguing since a regular disc or a floppy disc in our world would would probably be far too slim to be for the slot. Sprig even ends up inserting Hop Hop's thick book of rules into the empty slot for the system to soon overload and free all of them. And it definitely wouldn't be something like a VHS tape unless this ancient part of the world was based around the 80s, which I doubt due to Hop Pop's extremely old family lineage. You know, assuming the fact that we're not going by literal frog years, for example. But honestly, that's a tad bit of a stretch. Maybe this is a land of talking frogs. Anyways, another mystery that's yet to be discovered within this season is the reveal of what this factory was manufacturing. On the panel of the computer before it explodes, it displays images of what seems to be a giant frog armor suit for possibly something war related. This same armory is shown to come to life towards the ending of the episode. But the same invention is also shown wandering about towards the sun in a clip from the teaser where we can get a much better look of it. It's funny how earlier I was talking about how there could have been some sort of significant war that transpired in 
in the ancient times of Amphibia because this really looks like a robot built just for that. My next question would have to be what exactly will the robot be searching for or what is its mission at all? Is its original programming to find the Calamity Box? Will Anne and the gang have an encounter with it anytime soon? And by the way, will we ever have another episode within the historical archives? Because seriously, I felt like we could have learned a lot from that place. The episode pretty much wraps up here, but I can already tell you that this show has a ton to offer, and Disney once again sees potential in it as well. Matt Bradley and the team certainly have been working beautifully when it comes to not only the story so far, but also the visual aspects of the show as well. And don't you think for a minute that I would forget to talk about the Grunkle Stan Gravity Falls references found in the teaser trailer because I totally saw that. Now guys, that is the ending of my breakdown of this season's premiere. I am absolutely looking forward to more episodes. Also, in case some of you may not be aware, I've officially decided to create my very own Patreon page to show support for this channel. The most I decided to post onto the website is $5 a month since this is mainly just a great way to help me keep going and make more videos on YouTube during the pandemic and the future as a whole. If you're not able to, that's perfectly fine. Just remember to share these spectacular analysis videos, subscribe if you haven't, like the video, and much more. Without further ado, the next big thing is back, and I hope to catch all of you in the next one. Peace. You're talking frogs.